Whether one believes that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ or the Messiah is one matter, but one cannot dispute the impact he has had on society, both past and present. Virtually all scholars of antiquity accept that Jesus was a historical figure. The idea that Jesus was a mythical figure has been consistently rejected by the scholarly consensus. However, scholars' opinion do differ about the beliefs and teachings of Jesus, as well as the accuracy of the biblical accounts, with only two events being supported by nearly universal scholarly consensus. Jesus was baptized, and Jesus was crucified. What non-Christian scholars mostly disagree on is that Jesus was resurrected after his death on the cross. But what if hard evidence existed that proved Jesus was indeed resurrected? What if that artifact still exists today? So what is the Shroud of Torn? Let's try and find out. Hello, I'm Mike Droberg, a Marine Corps veteran and filmmaker, and we will answer these questions on today's episode of Paranormal History. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own tomb, which he had cut away in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 57 through 60. The Shroud of Turin, which exists today, is believed to be the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. It has been preserved since 1578 in the Royal Chapel of the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in Turin, Italy. According to modern measuring standards, it measures 14 feet 3 inches long and 3 feet 7 inches wide. It portrays two faint brownish images, those of the back and front of the body of a 5 foot 7 inch man, laid lengthwise along one half of the shroud, while the other half had been doubled over the head to cover the whole front of the body from face to feet. The images contain markings that correspond to the crucifixion wounds of Jesus, including thorn marks on the head, lacerations from flogging on the back, bruises on the shoulders, and various stains of what was proven to be type AB blood. The shroud first emerged historically in 1354 and it is recorded in the hands of a famed knight, Geoffrey de Charnay. In 1389, it went on exhibition. It was denounced as a fake by the local bishop of Troyes, who declared it cunningly painted the truth being attested by the artist who painted it. In 1453, Geoffrey the Charney's granddaughter, Marguerite, gave the shroud to the House of Savoy in Chambery, and there it was damaged by fire and water in 1532. It was then moved to the new Savoyard capital of Turin in 1578. It has been kept in the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist in Turin, Italy, ever since, and has been publicly exhibited only rarely such as on its 400th anniversary of its arrival in Turin in 1978. In 1998 and 2000, Pope John Paul II arranged for public viewings. He called the shroud a mirror of the gospel. Pope Benedict XVI summarily arranged a public display in 2010. And Pope Francis made a pilgrimage to see it in 2015. Millions believe that this is the cloth which wrapped Jesus Christ in his tomb, that the image upon it is his. The Shroud of Torn is made of fine linen, woven in a three-to-one herringbone pattern. The direction of the twist of the strands rules out Egypt as the country of origin and affirms ancient Israel. The Shroud's length and width are even in cubits, a unit of measurement not used in medieval Europe, where critics say the Shroud was faked. But in ancient Israel. The unusual weave reflects a wealthy owner, and Joseph of Arimathea was certainly that. In 2002, conservation measures were taken secretly for the shroud in Italy. With the 16th century backing cloth removed from the shroud for the first time, textile expert Childe Fleury Lumberg discovered a rare type of stitch on the backside of the shroud, which was known from only one other place, Masada fortress overlooking the Dead Sea, which became the last stand for the Jews in the first Jewish revolt. Only here, from the time and place of Jesus, has another example been found of a rare stitch discovered on the back of the shroud in 2002. The image on the shroud of a man crucified is the linen's greatest mystery. To this day, after exhaustive scientific study, 
numerous attempts to duplicate the figure of the man shown on it, no one has been able to do this at the microscopic level of the linen fibers. The image is only on the outermost layer of those fibers as discolorations. They are microscopic pixels. The image is not painted, despite the continued claims of people who simply repeat this explanation over and against the verdict of the experts from the Shroud of Turin Research Project STERP and the others before and since. The only traces of paint are from duplicates of the shroud that were pressed against the shroud to sanctify the duplicates in early centuries. These are tiny flakes of paint. The linen fibers themselves show no trace of brush strokes, binder, or pigment. Only in very recent time have scientists found a way to discolor linen strands as they are found on the Shroud of Torrent, the discolorations penetrating only to a tiny fraction of the width of a human hair. It was done by an extremely brief intense burst of radiation from the body producing heat and or ozone that discolored the fibers to form the images of a crucified man. Yes, a burst of high energy. This carries suggestions of its own about the man of the shroud. Because if it is Jesus, he proclaimed to be raised from the dead. Is the shroud a snapshot of the resurrection? And anyone who has seen the actual shroud, a full-size, high-detail replica of it, knows that the image of the crucified man is a negative, rather than a positive image. No one can answer how an alleged forger did this. Also, to recognize the image, one must be six or eight feet back from the shroud. Any closer, the image on the cloth is lost. This fact further argues against the forger. How could such an image be created by someone working up close? The proportions of the body are perfect, according to renowned artists like Dame Isabel Pixek. Wounds appear on the image which science has established to have been present on the cloth prior to the presence of the body image itself. If you imagine handwriting a message on a sheet of paper, but dotting the I's and crossing the T's, and inserting all the commas and periods before you wrote any words on the paper, you have an analogy to what an alleged forger must have done, putting blood on all the wounds before the wounds were located on the cloth. And the blood has been shown to be actual human blood, type AB. Normally, blood becomes brown as it ages. The blood of the shroud is red, which seems impossible if it is 2,000 years old. This has been advanced as evidence of fakery. But blood chemists know of changes in the blood of people under great stress or suffering, like a crucifixion victim. The rubin is a pigment that enters the blood with the breakdown of red cells. It causes blood to hold a red color. So did a forger use actual human blood, torture his donor so the blood would remain red for centuries, then paint the blood on a linen cloth before there is an image, all in order to fool people centuries later? When soil traces from the foot region of the shroud were analyzed for their composition with a scanning iron microprobe at Chicago's Enrique Fermi Institute, the graph of the results almost completely matched the graph readout for the aragonite soil of Jerusalem. Pollen grains adhering to tape samples pressed against the shroud indicated that the shroud had been present in the Jerusalem area, then northern Syria, Anatolia, Constantinople, and Europe. This matched the pattern of travel hypothesized by the Shroud students, based on ancient references to an Edessa cloth which found its way to Constantinople, then, as a result of the Fourth Crusade, came to France. If the Shroud were just a fake, the presence of all non-European pollens is inexplicable. An Israeli botanist, Dr. Avi Noam Denin of the Hebrew University Jerusalem, asserted that he has found flowers that bloom in Jerusalem in the spring on the cloth. Professor Dannon had no religious motivation to authenticate the shroud. In four places, an L-shaped set of burns appears on the shroud. These are damage holes from before the first known fire of 1532. The burns are often called the poker holes. An illustrated book called the Hungarian Prey Manuscript is kept in Budapest. The painting of Jesus' burial that certainly seems to portray the shroud is contained in that manuscript. Not only does the figure of Jesus match the shroud's crucified man, hair, beard, crossed arms, but the herringbone weave is shown on the cloth. And there too are the poker holes. The Prey Manuscript is dated to 1192. This poses a great problem for those who would dismiss the shroud as a fake because of the carbon-14 dating of the shroud that happened in 1988. Many people stopped paying attention to the Shroud of Turin, and they learned that the carbon-14 determined possible dates for the shroud were from 1260 to 1390. 
newspaper headline said the shroud was proven a fake, but the Hungarian prayer manuscript testifies that the shroud was already in existence at least 70 years before the earliest possible carbon-14 date. There's more to be said about the carbon-14 dating of the Shroud of Turin. One of the Sturp scientists, Raymond Rogers, wrote in a peer-reviewed article before his death that the weave of the edge from which the sample was taken showed anomalies. The material there was cotton, not linen, and it had been colored with agents to match the rest of the shroud. The conclusion drawn by many since that time is, the shroud was repaired on its frayed edge. To restore the pattern of the cloth, colored cotton threads were invisibly woven into the cloth. Since these were younger than the rest of the shroud, they gave a reading from the Middle Ages. Now three other tests for the age of ancient textiles all indicate that the Shroud of Torn is not a product of the Middle Ages, but much older. The Shroud of Torn has converted many to Christianity, making people understand that the resurrection was not simply a symbol, but a historical reality. Proof to some as you will that Christ is risen. Let us know your thoughts on the Shroud of Torn in the comments below. Thanks for watching Paranormal History. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any ideas for shows, please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time.